great start today, half past three. Uh, I'm up in Dublin, heading up a couple of hills up here, just small hills, um, up in Dublin Moor. Uh, I'll take them in, do a wee round of this, and then I've got an overnight car to get over that way. of a, a walk to make it a full day um, expedition in itself I suppose but um, to stop off for a few hours and do this Deer fencing up, and you keep the sheep off the hills, you keep the deer off, and then you put natural woodland back in, not the uh, stuff that you find down at the roadsides. This is uh, some traditional Scots pine that's up here, and uh, the landscape really recovers. It just goes to show you what's been lost on Scotland's mountains. I spoke to a guy from Poland uh, down in the borders and he was looking at the mountains there and saying, where are the trees? And if you grow up in Scotland and you, you don't really think about the way the landscape is, you, you've accepted that as natural. Uh, and you only have to go to Europe and see just how unnatural our mountain seeds really are. <laughs>
can see on this one, 504 metres. Uh, it's basically a bump. If you weren't looking, you would probably miss the fact that you were going over this particular top. And uh, I'm heading now for Croon Beg, 590 metres. Um, there's a few animal tracks and things here. Uh, quite easy to pick them up, but if you keep following them in, and ignore your direction of travel, you could end up just uh, disappearing off in the wrong direction. So I'm using the tracks when they're useful to me. Other than that, I'm ditching them and just heading in a direct line. Good visibility, I can see the, where I'm going to. Uh, there is another deer fence in the way, so I'm hoping that there's a, a gate up there fence or a style or something. Find out shortly. So I came up the, uh, there seems to be a bit of a path coming from uh, Ambinia to up to here. Um, obviously people are using this area and there is, there is some paths that are quite clearly marked. And then you get to a deer fence like this. And there's no indication for you as to where, where there's going to be a gate. Um, should I go left? Should I go right? Absolutely no idea. The estates, when they put these in, know fine well that people are going to want to come here. They're going to want to uh, climb up. Um, it would be an idea if, if the gate is not immediately visible especially along a pathway like this um, to put some kind of signage in telling you which way to go and how far the gate might be um, as it is um, the fence has actually fallen over there so I'm just going to have to cross the fence where it's fallen um, but other than that uh, from scoping about I can't actually see where the, the crossing point would be for this fence <laughs> Jacobite times uh, after the 1745-1746 uprising. Uh, hopefully I get a chance to do that tomorrow but uh, it depends on time. section was pretty hard going. Uh, instead of cutting down on the uh, the far side, on the rocky side of the hills, I uh, come back through the woods and it's pretty boggy in parts so in wet weather this would be quite a, a tricky route um, but on top of that a lot of holes in among the trees where the uh, trees have been planted uh, so you really have to watch your foot and I lost my foot a number of times in there. All in all not too bad I'm almost back at the, uh, the transmitter in the track, uh, back down to the car. Thank you. 
now's the time that you uh, realise that the GPS was never tracking you in the first place. Which is handy. So that's me finished uh, this part. Um, I'm going to head down the road, back down to Dalwini and over to the campsite and get set up for the night. That's 25 past 7 now. So by the time I get there, walk in. Um, that's a benefit of the summer when you get these longer nights. So those salts, this was the other night. So. Site. It's a uh, lock fuel there, fuel there, and uh, it's about a two kilometre walk in. So I'm going to uh, head in, away from this road, and uh, try and get set up before you know, it gets too late so I can enjoy the sunset. Shocking. A couple of feet off the side of the road. Wipes. If you want to do it, bury it. Ditched the uh, uh, day snack and for the camp tonight, all my gear is in a new rucksack that I'm trying out. It's called the Osprey Ether Pro 70, um, 70 litre capacity rucksack. Um, a straightforward design, very minimalist, one large chamber. And a detachable floating hood, two side pouches on the belt, which are also detachable. So, to start with, it weighs in at 1.85 kilograms, but you can quite easily drop that down if you're not carrying as much gear. Obviously, not everybody, not everybody's in the hills taking camera equipment and drones and the like. So, if you're not carrying all that stuff, you can get away with a much smaller bag. And for this, however, I'm carrying quite a lot of gear. It's only short walking, so I didn't mind throwing in some extra stuff. And, uh, first thoughts, yeah, initially when I got out of the bag, uh, I had a try on it. seemed very stiff. But once it's got a load on, quite comfortable. The uh, not as many pockets as some well 
probably two two pockets on the on the uh, the hip. But, uh, yeah, fairly comfortable so far with quite heavy loading, carrying about 20 kilograms. to where we're going to be camping. There's very little on this uh, side of the loch, it's flat enough. This is about the one spot where you can put a tent up. Uh, I'm absolutely um, infested by flies and midges, so I'm going to get the uh, skin so soft on, I'm getting the midge net out, I'm getting the thermocell going, uh, anything I can to keep all these beasties away from me and get the tent up. tent looks as if there's a little bit of a give in it and they're designed so that you can add a walking pole in for extra rigidity. You know, it just gives it that extra bit of tension, and yeah, now that's got a pole in it. Tonight's dinner, chicken curry, potatoes and rice. That's uh, Army Issue chicken curry, potatoes and rice, and that was really good. Um, one of the better meals I've had. Uh, they are heavy uh, to carry these things, but um, no, the taste was excellent.
that, so I'm going to call it a day. Had my dinner, had a good fly about the drone. Uh, this is moon, just getting visible now. Behind that cloud. Not sure what time uh, first light is, but I've brought my wee uh, sleeping mask so that hopefully I don't get woke up first time. Seven. I had a, quite a good night's sleep. It didn't get dark until uh, around about midnight. Um, and when I did eventually fall asleep, uh, which was about one o'clock, uh, woke up shortly after. Uh, it was starting to get light again. You could still see. There was no uh, um, no real need for the the torch. Um, so not not a lot of actual dark. There was a darkness last night, a bit of wind, rain, cloud cover over the, uh, a bit of cloud cover in the sky, so you know, no, no good visibility there. Um, slept quite well with a, this, just a sleeping mat and using the, the open sleeping bag as a blanket. So pretty warm. Get up now, um, get breakfast on. Get ready for the walkout. And this place is heaving with them. It's just after seven o'clock, so let's go and see if the milk's been delivered. Nice and cold. Yeah. 